Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be about how I made kangaroo, the uh, kangaroo, the eastern grey kangaroo. Uh, so this doll will be uh, going. Uh, some of the portions will be going towards help helping feed the animals um, that have suffered from the bushfires, as well as the platypus. Um, so it's a little charity that uh, helps and assists um, other organisations that. Uh, with food drop-offs and stuff, so because there's nothing to eat for the animals, so they help um, provide food and stuff for the people that work at the charity, well, the volunteers, I should say. Um, so this little one will be available in my shop at creaturesofnat.com if it already hasn't been adopted, uh, and I'll remember to link the charity down below if you would like to check it out as well. Uh, I tried to make sure I got one that is reputable and um, actually uses the money to uh help um help the animals rather than just squirrel the money away and uh pretend to care so this uh little one if you'd like to see how i made this little one uh then you can keep watching Alrighty, so I'm starting off you make, doing some casting actually. Uh, so I have previously sculpted and moulded and silicon and then I'm now casting in resin a kangaroo doll. I've only ever made a few of my kangaroo dolls um, but I really enjoy doing them. So this doll uh, again will be just like my last doll, the platypus. Um, the the proceeds, some of the proceeds from the sale of the doll will go towards um, helping a charity that um, will do air drop-offs for food with all the animals that have been affected by the bushfire. So um, I'll try and remember to link the charity down below and uh, I donated um, some of the profits from the previous platypus doll to the charity and um, yeah I hope to do it again with this can kangaroo doll um, because it's an ongoing uh, effort that they're doing trying to feed all the animals because there's nothing to eat for them. So anyway, a little bit the resin that I'm using. I'm using a resin called Easy Cast. It is a quick curing uh, resin. It, you have about a about a minute of work time, uh, depending on the temperature. Sometimes it's a little less. Uh, so it is really really fast curing, um, and it cures to a white or off white color. Uh, and if you want to know how I uh, pour resin, I have a resin tutorial in my shop if you're interested at creaturesofnat.com. There's also a um, simple mold making um, tutorial there as well. So um, it will come in a zip folder and it will have a PDF and a um, written tutorial, uh, a video tutorial as well. So something for everyone. Now this is what the resin cast looks like, um, as you can see it turned out white and now I can go ahead and start painting things. So I like to prime my resin pieces before I apply any paint to it. I use just a, a poster, uh, like a canvas primer. Uh, I have a video on my channel if you want to check it out, um, what exactly I use. Uh, and then once that's dry I can start painting in all the pieces. So I'm using a paint from the brand uh, Chromacryl. Um, it's 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 pretty good. I like the consistency of this paint. Um, I'm not sure if you can get it overseas because it is made in Australia. So I usually get it from a place here called Melbourne Artist Supplies. Um, they have big bigger bottles and the whole range um, available in their store. So uh, I usually get it from there. But you can use any water-based acrylic paint that you can find. It doesn't have to be that paint. Um, and I'm sure you can find it in any of your local craft stores where in your area. So I wanted to just give a little bit of info about the Eastern Grey Kangaroo, uh, the same as what I did with the platypus. Eastern Grey Kangaroos are a large marsupial found in eastern parts of Australia. They can often be mistaken for red kangaroos, but the two have an entirely different face. Eastern Greys are often found in open grassland areas and bushland areas. Kangaroo populations have increased dramatically due to the decrease in natural predators and the increase in grassland areas. So a little info about the Eastern Grey because I know a lot of people are more familiar with the red kangaroos but like I said they are very very different uh, and they have uh, little black markings on their muzzle and they're a lot larger and have a grey uh, a red appearance and they're Central Australia as well not Eastern. 
Alright, so this is a little look at the hands, the same deal, I sculpted it, moulded it in silicon, now have cast it in resin. Uh, as uh, kangaroos have little black paw pads, I'm painting it with the same colour as I did the eyes, using that chromacryl paint. Uh, I suggest to put a sealer over your paint job, uh, especially on resin, because sometimes it can be a bit slippery and it can scratch easily because um, resin is sort of, sort of a, it's not a porous um, surface so it doesn't absorb the paint rather than you putting it on top of the surface so definitely always do a primer and a sealer to seal your paintwork. And kangaroo feet are a little unusual so uh, this is a little look at what the feet look like. Um, I've never really seen a foot in something else like this. Um, so again, it was a bit of a different thing for me to sculpt, but um, it's very clearly a distinct kangaroo foot. So again, using the same paint as I did everything else, the chromacryl black paint and uh, primed it first. Um, I usually uh, coat the, the, the resin pieces in a couple of layers of paint, just so it has a nice solid paint texture. Yeah, we can move on to the faux fur. So I'm using a, uh, it's a longish pile faux fur uh, and it has black tips on the end. And the reason why I use this faux fur was because when you trim this uh, faux fur, it has a really interesting texture uh, once the pile is short and it is, it looks very, very similar to a kangaroo's uh, fur or the texture of the fur. So I thought this was a really good idea to use this particular fur. So I'm just drawing some patterns on uh, the backing of the faux fur. I've made these patterns myself. I have a pattern video on my uh, Patreon for $5 and up if you're interested to learn about how I make them. Um, so you can head over there, the link will be in the description. Now this is what the faux fur looks like. I don't know if you can see the texture by parting this uh, just as yet, but um, I've used this faux fur quite a number of times and it's, I know what the texture is like once it's trimmed. So again, it was a really good choice uh, for me to, to use this one. Now I'm using a small pair of sharp scissors to cut the backing of the fur. Uh, I like to use small scissors just because I can control it a lot better than actually um, using a larger pair of scissors. Uh, but I mean, give give it a go and find which tool you like using. Um, you might find large scissors or even a knife works better for you. Uh, but yeah, it's totally up to you what you use. You just want to be careful that you're cutting the back of the faux fur and not the pile um, because then it will kind of make it a bit useless and then you have to do it all over again and it's a waste of faux fur. So once it's all cut up uh, and cut out, I can pin it fur side together. Now I like to use a sewing machine, uh, but you can hand sew things. Um, there's no right or wrong, wrong way to do a body. It's just really dependent on what uh, technique you end up developing. Um, I particularly like this technique. I find it to be a lot stronger and a lot more time um, uh, effective as well to use a sewing machine, but I've also experimented with other ways. Um, which you can find on my Patreon as well. Um, I'm still very much experimenting those particular ways, but I'm liking the way they're turning out because they're a bit better to, um, I, can, I can create bodies a bit easier and a bit more refined. Um, so I use this technique on the main wolf doll that I just made um, because I didn't have a body for it and I thought I would give this way a go. Turned out um, really well, but um, like I said, it took a lot longer to make the doll because it's all basically hand sewing um, rather than um, using the machine uh, and I like using the machine. So this is what we have once I've sewn it all up. So for this particular doll I've left the arms open and I've left the entire back end open including the legs just because they're a little bit thin to feed through and it's just not worth it to me to uh, sew a tiny bit in the back end and um, push it through. So I left the entire back end open and then now we can turn it the right way around uh, and you can get a better look at what it looks like. So I basically just pull the neck area through the back. Uh, usually it pops through, sometimes you might uh, need a little uh, timber tool to feed things through. Um, don't use metal because you will end up breaking the backing of the faux fur and then having to cover the hole or sew up the hole. So always use a blunt me uh, wooden tool. I find that works really well for uh, just poking it through a little bit easier. And also another reason why I leave the gaps open a bit 
bigger so I can uh, feed the fabric through a little bit easier. So this is what we're left with. Uh, all the rest will be hand sewed um, but I can start making the armature now and then once the armature is made and fed through I can start sewing it all up but you can get an understanding of what the body is looking like. Uh, obviously it needs to be trimmed but I wait till um, the end of the process to start doing that just so I can shape it all at once. So the armature that I made is comprised of a ball and socket spine and also um, uh, wire legs and arms. Uh, I opted for this because um, I, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> uh, the plastic ball and socket armature is a little bit thicker than the, than, the, um, than the wire and offers a bit more support so I went for that while the wire the hands and the feet are quite small so um, I opted for the wire this time. You can find a tutorial in my shop on how I do make my wire armatures so if you're interested in that um, then you can head over there. Uh, I do plan on making a video about the ball and socket armature and I will be doing a big order soon, very very soon uh, from the manufacturer and I should have some more stock in my shop. So once that's happy, uh, once I'm happy with uh, the way the armature looks, I can start gluing things and sewing things up. So I use a tacky fabric glue. I get it from a store here called Spotlight. Um, but I mean, you can find it in any local craft store. It doesn't have to be this one. I used to get it from Riot, but they don't seem to have the one that I used. So I just go to Spotlight now. It's um, actually a bit cheaper than Riot as well. Um, and it comes in a big bottle and a small bottle if you're after a smaller bottle. Uh, so I just load up the neck area and uh, just stick it on and usually leave it overnight just to um, get uh, adhered a bit, a, bit, a bit better and that way uh, I will know the body won't move from the head and it has like a strong base. Um, so once that's dry I can start filling the body with some polyfill and polyfill is what I fill the dolls with. Uh, I have a video if you want to know more about it. Um, it's basically the stuff that you find in your cushions and I get it from my local craft store as well. Um, it provides a nice soft uh, feel to the dolls and it's uh, also quite movable because it's a a lot more fluffy so rather than batting where batting's a bit more solid and uh, doesn't it doesn't make your doll feel as soft um, moving on to the tail and you can see I just slipped it over the armature there and then I can start sewing everything up uh, so I start off sewing with the legs and then I work my way to the back end of the doll uh, now I use a ladder stitch to sew um, everything up and uh, basically a ladder stitch is a stitch that hides in the back of the seams so and it sort of closes the seams over on itself and uh, like a fold so you can't tell um, that it is sewn together um, and Fofo is really forgiving for that because um, it's got a pile <laughs> and you can sort of hide behind the pile uh, but I always try to make my sew sewing neat uh, and um, it's something to always work on is having a neat sew line. And then once that's sewn up the same deal as the neck I could start gluing all the pieces together using that same tacky fabric glue. Uh, I don't need to leave this overnight to move on to the next step because um, it usually starts going tacky in about five minutes so you can leave it and move on to the next piece. Uh, once I've done that and sewn everything up I can apply some faux fur to the head. Uh, so desperately needs a trim um, and then once I've trimmed him up I can start refining all of the areas that I uh, need to refine again uh, painting in the eyes again uh, just to refine the eye socket area and any markings and stuff uh, sometimes I apply some shadows just depends on um, what the animal has on their face and um, what I want to accentuate as well. Uh, I use a combination of that same chroma krill and I also use some fabric paint from Jacquard. I also use paint pens from Sharpie but I can't actually get them here in Australia anymore. I don't know why I can't find them. Uh, I don't know if they've discontinued them or people were just weren't buying them in Australia. As maybe I was the only one that was buying them. Um, but I found them to be really really helpful um, and useful for my dolls. Anyway, this little one will be available in my shop. My Patreons have early access to it, so uh, if they haven't snapped him up, then you can head to my shop at creaturesofnet.com and find him there. Like I said, the, some of the proceeds will be going to uh, help uh, feed the animals that are affected in the bushfire. But and again, I'd like to thank my Patreons for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Link is in the description if you would like to also support. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creaturesofnet and my shop at creaturesofnet.com. 
and I will see you in the next one. Bye!